Hello and welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Two coalition senators have lashed out at the proposed $3 billion takeover of Grain Corp, Australia's biggest grain handler, by grilling the American bidder about accusations that it had been engaged in price fixing and rigging markets. The questions from Liberal Senator Bill Heffernan and National Senator Fiona Nash heightened pressure on the US giant, Archer Daniels Midland. Allegations of price fixing, bribery and fraud raised serious concerns about ADM's bid to take over Grain Corp, Senator Nash said. Senator Heffernan asked whether ADM planned to use so-called thin capitalisation rules to reduce its tax burden in Australia. We're not into that shit, the forthright New South Wales Senator told the startled visitors. A total of 35 sheep industry supply chain organisations have thrown their collective weight behind a five-year funding extension bid by the Cooperative Research Centre for Sheep Industry Innovation, the Sheep CRC. The Armidale New South Wales-based agency is entering its final formal funding year. It says it is set to exceed many of the objectives set for it by the federal government when the CRC was first established in 2007. CEO Professor James Rowe said last week the extension application outlined plans to enhance sheep monitoring and management, introduce value-based sheep meat trading and deliver affordable DNA-based genetic tools. The company behind a huge prawn farming proposal called Project Sea Dragon and earmarked for the far north of Western Australia reportedly has nine investors in talks about funding the first stage of the billion dollar project. Western Australian Resources Limited was on target to begin a bankable feasibility study next month, which could eventually cover more than 10,000 hectares and produce 100,000 tonnes of black tiger prawns a year. It was growing speculation Project Sea Dragon would straddle the Western Australian Northern Territory border and link in with development of the Ord Irrigation Scheme, the Western Australian newspaper reported. WARL was targeting an investment of up to $500 million for Stage 1, based on a 3,000 hectare land area. The Australian sugar industry is well placed to capitalise on its proximity to the growing consumption markets throughout East Asia, according to a recent Rabobank report. Rabobank analyst Tracy Allen said the Australian cane industry was experiencing a period of rejuvenation with an injection of offshore capital and consolidation across milling assets and cane supply. The increasing involvement of East Asian sugar companies in Australian milling came with opportunities to build on the strength of Australia as a supplier. Challenges would be to maintain the status of a high quality exporter and to ensure that volume grew to match rising demand. Queensland charity Aussie Helpers has launched a new fundraising campaign aimed at helping in-need farmers up north. The Buy a Bail campaign is asking Australians to buy the essentials our farmers need, including stock feed, diesel, donations for family essentials, or simply to volunteer to help. The need today is described as critical, as much of northwest Queensland was suffering under a combination of depressed cattle exports, drought, no wet season and bushfires. More details are available at the beefcentral.com website. The United States beef industry is hoping that countries in Asia will soon lift restrictions on imports of American beef. This comes after the World Organization for Animal Health classified US beef as having a negligible risk of BSE, or mad cow disease. In particular, the US was hoping that Singapore's regulatory authorities will take their cue from the World Organization for Animal Health, according to Channel News Asia. It had been nearly 10 years since the US was last able to export beef to Singapore without restrictions. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I look forward to your company again next week. I'm Andy Walker.